All righty, guys. We had yet again another green day in the stock market today. All across the board, green, Russell down, NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the VIX, funny enough, also went up on the day, closing just a little bit under 20 points. So we got to break down a lot in this video. We have to break down charts, the markets, stocks I'm looking at. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee. And I have this big old half gallon water jug here. I can't actually open this on the video. Uh, but yeah, cheers, guys. Get those 10 stocks from Moomoo with a $100 deposit and those 12 stocks from Weeble with any amount deposited. All those are linked down below. And let's dive right into the video. So check it out. The markets today were on fire pretty much all throughout the day. And we did have some volatility. Hence why, again, like I said, the VIX went up on the day about uh, 2%. We did have some volatility as we saw a bit of selling in the beginning of the day, I guess you can say, within the first 30 minutes. And mind you, SPY in the pre-market was at 424. It ran all the way to 427.50 at about 10 a.m. Then we started to get a bit rocky. We got a bit of a sell-off, but that is where we got the next huge influx of buyers where SPY went from 425.65 at about 11.15 a.m. on the East Coast and then it ripped pretty much for the rest of the day, and it closed a little bit under 429 bucks a share, up 0.4% on the day. And you guys can see here, we actually got to almost 429.50, just about 20 minutes. When was that? 20 minutes before the close? Not even. We're talking eight, nine minutes before the close. So we're getting awfully close to testing 430 bucks. That's what I'm trying to get at here, guys, which is a big resistance on the four hour chart that I've been talking about like crazy on the YouTube channel. <clears throat> and for this to not be a bear market rally, a bull trap, whatever you want to call it, we have to see it proven to us, right? On the technicals, on the charts, which as of now, we're not getting that yet. But if we start breaking 430, if we start getting out of 440 and especially above the highs, this is where we could really start getting, I mean, a huge confirmation break to the upside. If we start taking the highs out from the end of March, early April, being about 455, 460, 465 on SPY and on Triple Q, that's right around, let's see here. Um, right around if triple Q breaks 340, 350 and starts taking the highs out from the end of March, early April, three, 370 roughly, that's where this could really start, <clears throat> start moving to the point where we're like, all right, maybe this isn't just a bear market rally. Maybe we're going to get an extended rally, but who knows? Because the truth is guys, I'm being real. We're not quite there quite yet. Uh, you know, because we're still clearly in the downtrending channel here on the four hour chart on Triple Q and SPY, same crap, right? So let's see what, uh, what was I going to say? Crude oil, that's right. Let's, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let, I'm mixing up the words today, guys. Let's see what Triple, or not Triple Q, there I go again. Crude oil, let's see what crude oil did today and currently where it's at. It is down three and a half percent. This is not good, guys. Oil is now down. At least it's not good for the bulls. It is down under 90 bucks a barrel. Eight, look at that. It closed at 88.88. What's you know? What are the odds of that? Uh, but that's where it is right now. And it closed right at the lows from pretty much the entire month. All of August so far, if I pull up the 20-day chart, you'll be able to see it. All this month, crude oil is held above 88 87.50. I mean, earlier today it did hit 86.80, but it didn't last long. It ran up pretty much right after that. So if crude oil does get a break under the 86 low from earlier today, especially under 85 to the low 80s, I mean, that's where it's going to go, low 80s. That's the next gap here on the downside. That is the support from the end of January before crude oil went all the way to 130 a barrel, which you guys, if you, if you don't remember that, I don't know what to tell you. That was a big time, a uh, big moment there because that happened like that. I mean, it happened in a couple of weeks. Oil went from 90 to 130 in about a couple of weeks, <clears throat> which is nuts, right? So, yeah, if we break 88, 86, 85, this is probably going 80, 81 in my personal opinion. Then at that point, we're probably going to end up getting uh, another bit of a, a relief rally, but we shall see what happens when we actually get there. If we even get there, who knows? Nobody really knows what is going to happen, guys. So with that being said, let me dive over here to 
uh, Weeble and see what's going on when it comes to crypto. I feel like we haven't talked about crypto in a couple of videos. Oops, bear with me here, guys. There we go. So right now, Bitcoin is at 24,000, pretty much on the dot. And it is down on the day. You guys can see it's down about 300 bucks when I'm filming this video, down 1.3%. And it looks like it got yet again to about 25,000, 25,500. And let me pull up the five minute chart. Where was that? When did that even happen? Was that yesterday? Yeah, that might have been yesterday. Uh, right around midnight, actually, last night. Um, th it looks like this hit, yeah, 25.2. Then it went all the way to 23.8. Talk about volatility, guys. And now it's right around there 23.8, 9, 2400, or uh, 24,000, rather. So. BTC clearly tried to break 25 again, got rejected, and going back to that, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, let's see, was that the hourly chart or four hour? What was I on? There we go. Yeah, four hour. Look at this. We're still not breaking out of the highs or the lows, rather, from the middle of May heading into June. So BTC's got to break out. If you're a bull, and if the bulls manage to do this, if they break out of uh, 25, 5, 26, there's probably going to be a huge leg up coming on Bitcoin, 100% in my personal opinion. And if we take a look here at Ethereum, let's pull that up. This already did that. You know, we got a big leg up. Now it's pulling down a little bit, you know, maybe getting ready for round two. Who knows? You know, at this point, it's down 2%. Ethereum's at 18, a little bit under 1900. It's at 1890 right now, down 2%. And it's probably going to come back and test, in my opinion. Uh, I, would, I would argue probably... 1800 <clears throat> maybe if that breaks 1775 that's where it's going to test and we shall see if buyers come in again there maybe it doesn't even get that low maybe it just goes to 1850 and if buyers come in there all right great you know maybe at that point we start making a push back to 2000 let's see how it ends up playing out so what do you guys think about the stock market bitcoin ethereum let me know your thoughts down below hit that like button and make sure if you haven't done so already to get your 12 stocks from this platform weeble those are linked down below all you got to do is use that link deposit any amount of money and you could get up to 12 stocks get those stocks and with that being said let's dive back to think or swim and see what's going on with seven or uh, these seven stocks that i want to talk about so the first one on the list which we haven't talked about in a couple of videos but i want to do an update on it is amc let's do an update quickly on amc because it is still pulling back or at least it was last i checked uh, anything could happen here after the bell yeah look at that it closed down 0.9 percent on the day and it looks like I don't want to just call it prematurely, which I'm not going to do, but it looks like it. we're starting to get a little bit of uh, some buying pressure here. Not a ton. Again, I don't want to call it prematurely, but it looks like we got the double top. We, we, we call, uh, called it out, talked about it at about 27, 27.50, and now we're in the low 24. So it's pulled back about 15-ish percent. And look at where we are. Pretty much right by right now, the 50 SMA on the four-hour chart, big support, which we held a couple of days ago, many times actually. And if I pull up the intraday chart this morning, look at that. AMC hit 22.67. Then we had a sharp V-shaped recovery of 8%. That is, uh, that's that's a very you know big bounce right there, guys. You know, V-shaped recovery, right? Pretty nice confirming bounce on that support. And we ended up closing on a nice little upswing, right? So I'm not 100% convinced that we're, we're just going to moonshot back to 27 then go to 30 from now. I'm not convinced yet, but we're, we're keeping an eye on it. Let's put it that way. And, and quite frankly, I would want to see AMC come down uh, even more. I mean, if this were to come down, let's say maybe back... Uh, maybe it takes the low out from, from last week or when was that? Uh, yeah, last week, maybe it takes out 20, 21 bucks and starts going down to 17, 18, 19 again. I feel like that would be an even healthier pullback and the, uh, the, 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 the snapback from there would be even sharper, but who knows? Time will tell, you know, these are just some, uh, theories here. So what do you guys think about that? Let me actually get a little sip of my, this is actually very watered down. This might be the same coffee. I think it's the same coffee. Yeah from this morning. I never got another one. Oops. It's all good guys. Better than nothing. So yeah, AMC's looking all right. Pretty decent. Let's give it a little bit. Give it some time. Let's see how it plays out. Let's pull up the next stock here, which is Eli Lilly and company today. This one up about 2%, pretty strong day outperforming all the indexes here. And we're noticing now 
clear buying pressure at the bottom of the channel, right? Clear as day. Look at that. Uh, you know, we held a higher low at about 300. The previous one was 285. Before that, 275. And now we're obviously above 300 again. Actually, we're above 310, the 50 SMA, but not quite yet above the 180 SMA, which is right around 315. So I'm going to be a bit, I don't want to say cautious or conservative, but I'm going to put my alert at 320. And if we, you know, it succeeds in breaking, let's say it breaks out of the moving averages 320, right? It's going to shoot, in my opinion, to the top of this channel, like it, like it's been playing within over the course of uh, really the majority of this year of 2022. So Eli Lilly and company, I like the way it's setting up here. Watch out for it, guys. Uh, you know, pretty good setup, in my opinion, at least. And look at Monster. Monster's being very difficult, guys, at 100 bucks a share. I don't know how many times I've talked about it on the YouTube channel where it gets so close to 100, fails each time. You know, look at this. Back in uh, the beginning of July, throughout all of July, we tested 100, even early early August, right? Tested 100 many times, failed, right? Back in, when was this? January, tested 100, failed. If you pull up the three-year chart, it's happened before that. Look, back in 2021, multiple tests at 100. So let's just say Monster does not like 100 bucks, but it doesn't really matter because at this point, it's pulled back. After earnings, it shook out weekends, whatever, saw a bit of a pullback profit taking 12% drop. You guys see that. And today it went up 2%. It looks like we are holding a higher low. That's the key here. You know, we are starting to see buyers come back in. So I'm going to set my alert. It's currently at 9180. I'm going to put my alert at 93 bucks. If this takes out 93, mark is that we're above, we might have a shot to go back yet again to test 98 to 100 bucks a share. This gap right here. I think could fill considering, um, you know, the past price action that we've seen here on monster. So you guys got to watch it. MNST is the ticker Procter and Gamble. PG is another one, which I'm noticing an ascending triangle. You guys see this. We have clear resistance at about 150 bucks. We've had that since the end of uh, May, roughly. And we've been making higher lows since the middle of June. You guys can see this here, 130 bucks, 140 bucks. Now we're running back up towards 150 after having a 1.3% green day to test the resistance, multi-month resistance, which I believe if we take this point out, 150 bucks, mark is that we're above, set my alert, boom. If we take that out, there's going to be a push probably, let me see here, uh, I would say towards the mid-high 150s in the short term. Um, that's the next gap here based on resistance from the middle of May. You guys can see that. And you guys got to realize, Procter & Gamble, these boring value stocks, I mean, they're, they're not going to move like an AMC, a GameStop, a growth stock. This stuff might take time. It might take weeks if it even happens, right? So keep that in mind. But if 150 breaks, 156, seven bucks. That's where this could be going. And another one that I completely missed. I'll be honest with you guys. I completely missed it. It is Charge Point CHPT. Look at this Charge Point. We we called it out by the way, uh, but I didn't trade it. I completely missed it. Uh, it's funny that happens sometimes when you talk about a crap ton of stocks every single freaking day, right, guys? Um, look at that. The ascending triangle. It broke 16, ripped to about 18.50. Um, that was a, that was on Friday, and then today pretty much just consolidated. It went down a little bit, sure, but still net net. Looking at where it was on Thursday to now, it's up a ton, right? And it's it's breaking out. So it is a little overbought. Let me just be real there. It's overbought, but the fact that it's breaking out, trading at multi week highs, multi month highs above the moving averages, we're seeing a golden cross. We got to watch it. And every pullback, any pullback that I see here, whether it's towards 1750, 17, 18 bucks, whatever, you know, I'm going to be watching it on the uh, the overall breakout. So I like charge point and two, I guess the, uh, the vaccine stocks. I don't know what you want to call them, guys, but the one here is. GILD Gilead Sciences. This is up five percent today. We got uh something about a cancer therapy, uh something like that. 
I didn't have enough time to read into it, guys. Um, Gilead's da 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 significantly improves overall survival in pre-treated metastatic breast cancer. Okay, so that is what is causing, yeah, four percent pop after sharing new data for cancer drug. All right, there we go. That is what's moving up Gilead, or what moved it up today over five percent. And it is breaking out. The reason why we're covering it in this video, right? Look at this. We are taking out the highs from a couple of months ago. Clear breakout from the, uh, what was that? $65 high from the end of May, early June. So this is at a multi-month high. And really, it's almost at a, a new high for the year. I mean, last time, well, I guess 70, well, eh, it's a while till we get there. I mean, the highs for the year were at about 72, three-ish dollars, but we're getting awfully close, guys, and again, we're at a multi-month high. So Gilead, it's a little overbought, I'll be honest, but if it consolidates, cools off in the mid-60s, maybe we get an opportunity on this one. And another one, the last one for this video, if you guys stuck till the end, let me know. What do you guys got to comment today? If you stuck till the end, comment uh, what's in front of me here. I have some chapstick here. So as corny as it sounds, comment chapstick if you stuck till the end, guys. And Moderna is the last one that we have to talk about. Look at this. We have an ascending triangle. Higher lows have been made for a good couple of months, but for more than just a couple of months, we've been struggling at about 190 bucks, 195, 200 bucks on Moderna. And look at what's going on here. You know, we hit 200 a couple of days ago, failed. Now we've pulled back, but today we had a 3% green day, and it seems like we've consolidated over the past couple of days, and now I'm just waiting to see if this, starts, uh, if this stock starts to turn up. You know, again, we consolidated. Now we got to wait for the direction of the upside, which we're not getting yet, but I have a feeling we might be able to get that. So from 175 to 200, that's what we got to watch in the short term. Then if the ascending triangle plays out, maybe we break 200, and then we might go crazy again. Who knows, guys? So with that being said, I'm going to wrap the video up here. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, if you stuck till the end, I know it's corny. Comment, chapstick. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for the video, you guys. And don't forget to also get your 10 stocks for Moomoo, 12 stocks from Weeble. All those are linked down below. And with that being said, cheers. I will catch you in the next video. Peace out, guys.